Hello and welcome to this quick video. This is about how you update Express LRS receivers. Now this has been going around for quite a while now, but I'm making this one specifically aimed for those of you that might be new to this. Express LRS is becoming the darling of the hobby. It is a protocol that isn't owned by any manufacturer. And that means that you can't get locked in to a proprietary protocol that the manufacturer then drops talking about things like AWCST version one from FreeSky back in the day, some of the older technologies from people like Vitaba and Spectrum. The fact that Express LRS is not owned by anybody means that you can buy the hardware from anybody, the receivers from anybody, and you can just update everything. However, the tricky part for some pilots up to now has been that then updating the software that's running on both the radio itself but also the receivers as well has been a little bit complicated and the developers have been working hard to dramatically reduce the amount of complexity so if you can use a computer in a basic way then you're going to be set and in this video i'm going to go through the process and we'll actually update one of my receivers live so that you can see exactly how i do it here now, there are actually three different ways that you can update the receiver. However, I'm going to show you the way using a Wi-Fi hotspot. Why do I particularly like that one? Well, I'll get onto that in a moment. But the three ways are pass-through. So if you already have a flight controller in your model and it has the receiver connected by CRSF, which is how most people do it, then you can talk to the receiver via the flight controller and you can flash it that way too. So you connect your USB cable from your computer into your flight controller, and then it will push the update via that cable through the flight controller into the Express LRS receiver. That's amazingly useful, and it means that you can do it very simply, and typically those things are powered via the USB cable anyway, so you don't have to plug the battery in. It's great if you already have the receiver installed in a model with a flight controller. However, it only kind of works if it's connected to a flight controller that's going to do the pass-through and it's configured correctly. So unfortunately, it isn't bulletproof. If you're connecting via something like SBUS or a PWM connection, you know what, that isn't going to work for you. However, that is one of the easiest ways to unbrick an Express LRS receiver if you get into a condition where you can't update or something goes wrong with an update and the receiver then doesn't respond. There is a little boot button that will put it into a kind of a bootloader mode. And then if it's connected to the uh, flight controller, the flight controller will act as basically the connection. The next way to do it is the way that lots of people were doing it back in the early days, and that's using some kind of third party adapter to take the USB connection from your computer into a connection that will work with the Express LRS receiver. This is being used less and less common. You need a specific third party piece of hardware. You need to make connections off and it's just a bit painful. I've never used it here because I always use the third way and that is using the Wi-Fi access point method. All Express LRS receivers, after a default timeout, default timeouts typically 30, maximum about 60 seconds. If they don't connect to a radio and they're just sat there waiting to connect to something, after 60 seconds, they time out and they create a Wi-Fi hotspot. You can then open the Wi-Fi networks on your computer and then you can connect to it. And then that will fire up a little web page and you're looking at all the configuration settings. And this is one of the really powerful things about Express LRS, because rather than you having to do things via a Lua script or via beeps or flashing lights and pressing buttons, you can just do it via a web browser. And in here is four different tabs that allows you to set everything up. One of those tabs allows you to do the firmware update, but in there is also the setup that allows you to assign the different channels, how it's all working, what the fail safe positions are and everything else. The reason that I like the Wi-Fi stuff is that it works irrespective of whether the receiver is connected to a flight controller straight out the packet, whether it's hidden away in the middle of something, whether you can or can't get to a button or a connection or actually the, the pins that are on it. If you just power up an Express LRS receiver, leave it for 60 seconds, it'll create a Wi-Fi access point, connect on a computer and you are set. So it is a universal way to connect. So that's the way that I do it here. In terms of the process, the process is pretty easy and straightforward. You download the Express LRS configurator, get hold of the latest one, I'll put a link to that down below, and then you need to answer a couple of questions about the version that you want. I'd recommend go for the latest greatest. 
and then you need to tell it what kind of hardware. Now this is much easier now than it used to be in that the specific hardware that you're looking for will be found. You first of all choose the manufacturer of the piece of hardware, it might be Radio Master, it might be Beta FPV, it might be anybody whose kit you've got, and then you can scroll down the list and find the receiver that you have in your paw. Once you have those two things selected, then you can go down and you can configure how it's going to be flashed. I would always radio button the Wi-Fi option. And then go and select things like if it's got a bind phrase, if it is going to be accessing your home Wi-Fi network when it's all fixed, all those kind of different things. And then hit build. It'll build the firmware file. And then you need to just put that somewhere on your desktop fire up the receiver, let it time out for 60 seconds so it goes into Wi-Fi mode, connect to it, go in the firmware tab and just upload that file that you've just made and it'll do it all. It's that easy. The other thing I recommend is once it has updated, I would power cycle the receiver, just again, wait for it to time out for a Wi-Fi access point, connect, go into the setup tab and just make sure it all is exactly set up the way that you want. It should be should have also copied over the settings and things, but I would always just double, triple check that. So it's not difficult. So let me actually go through an updating that I've just been doing to some of the stuff here for version 3.3, specifically around playing with SBUS. So to perform the update, I download Express LRS Configurator. Uh, you can get it from this address. I'll put this address in the links down below. If you have been playing with this, once you've installed it once, when you run it subsequently and there's an update available, it can automatically uh, take you to this page to download the latest and greatest update. It is available for lots of different operating systems, Windows, Mac and Linux. You need to install the right file. I've downloaded and run this file here, Express RS Configurator Setup. You may get a warning in Windows to say that that is something that is dangerous to run. That's only typically because it is a brand new file. Once we've downloaded and run it, it'll look a little bit like this. This is 1.6, which is the latest version as I am recording it. Your version might be slightly different and the layout might be subtly changed, but it hasn't really changed dramatically since it was first brought out. Wouldn't worry too much about most of this stuff. We're just going to build the new firmware for the receiver that we're interested in. And first of all, let's just update this one here. This is the Beta FPV Super P 14 channel RX ELRS 2.4 gig. And it does absolutely have the ability to have an S bus out. So let's have a look at this. So what we need to do is just fill in all this stuff and then we can build it. Now you can build and flash if you're connected to the receiver via a cable and those things, then you can do it all at once. I don't tend to do it that way. I tend to do it by the Wi-Fi method, which means that even when the receiver is buried away inside a model, it doesn't matter. You can just power it up, but don't power on the radio. So the receiver doesn't get a connection to the Express LRS radio, it'll default to Wi-Fi and then you can connect to it and do whatever you want. Now, we can show pre-releases in here as well. Um, I would just, unless you're really into testing beta software, just go for the releases. Click on the down arrow, here's all the ones that are available. We're going to flash it with the official 3.3, this particular beta FPV uh, review unit that I got here came with a pre-release version, but we'll go for the proper one so we can make sure we're using that for the video. Next thing we need to do is select the target or basically the type of device that we want to flash. Again, we can pick pretty much anything. Most of the names these days, particularly the ones that are working with the uh, Express LRS project directly have it specifically listed out here and that is great there are some diy devices and stuff as well but for here all we need to do is to find the beta fpv and there's 2.4 and 900 megahertz versions this is a 2.4 gig receiver so we'll click on that and then we can choose the device here's all the different devices and right here at the very bottom is the one that we're after super p 14 channel 2.4 gig rx now, we then have the flashing method. We can either flash it through Betaflight. That's a really nice way to do it. If it's already installed in the model and you have it connected via a USB cable to the flight controller, you can basically flash it via the flight controller, similar to the way that you do things like configure your ESCs and update the uh, D-Shot firmware. We can flash it over a UART, which is kind of a direct connection, or we can use Wi-Fi. We're gonna use Wi-Fi and that will also mean that we can just do that second step. 
Next bit then is the device options. Let's go into standard mode for this so we can look at all these different pieces. We can choose the regulatory domain, whether or not we're in the EU or we're in the non-EU. That changes a couple of things, including things like your maximum power, whether or not you're using a binding phrase. I don't use binding phrases here because I get lots of things in for review, so I tend to keep my radios unlocked. Most bind and fly stuff that uses ExpressLRS will come without a binding phrase attached. So to put the receiver into a binding mode, you power it briefly three times, and then that will put it into binding mode. Typically that's a double flash on the LED. Then you have things like compatibility options, which the cool thing is if you hover over the question mark, it will absolutely tell you what that bit's about if you're not sure. So this is basically for KISS V1 flight controllers. We're gonna have performance options. I like have lock on first connection, and then you can actually add your home Wi-Fi, SSD and password if you want it to connect to your router and connect to your Wi-Fi system at home rather than directly connect it. I don't tend to set those up uh, just because there are so many units coming in and out of here. I tend to connect to them all um, automatically. The next thing here, auto Wi-Fi on interval. This is basically how long it will default to before it turns on the Wi-Fi access. 60 seconds a minute is pretty typical now. Uh, it used to be less in older versions. So we can now build and flash. So because we actually haven't got the receiver connected at the moment, and I do this in two steps because of course to use all this, we need to be connected to the internet itself. I would just build and click on build. And what it's gonna do is verify that all the stuff that we've just put in actually makes sense. And then it's going to create the firmware and it's gonna drop it into a location and it'll open that location. So we need to keep this handy because this is the bit that we need for the following step. Now this is an awful lot quicker than it used to be, specifically because these days they've changed the way that the firmware is built. In the old days, that would be a three, four, five minute job, downloading all the files and compiling it and everything else. Because a lot of it is pre-compiled these days, it gets a lot faster. So now what I can do is put that onto the receiver. So I've copied that firmware onto the desktop. I re strongly recommend you do that before you close out Express LRS Configurator. Uh, you'll, otherwise you'll struggle to find where it put it. Now I've done that, I have powered up the receiver and it has sat there for 60 seconds and gone into Wi-Fi mode. So now we can connect it and update it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to look at all the Wi-Fi bits that are available. And we can see here at the top is Express LRS Receiver. So we're gonna click on that. I'm gonna say connect. That is going to then connect to the Wi-Fi access point that has magically appeared on the receiver. And you see now if I was connected to this and it had all been done through the Wi-Fi hub on the home network, we could have done it as one operation. However, I definitely like doing it as two. Here we have all the different settings, but the thing that I want here is update. And what we need to do is to browse to the file that we are interested in, and that is the desktop and then we're gonna click on update. And what it's gonna do is upload that file to the receiver. The receiver is then gonna go through the process and we just need to let it do all this. Again, do make sure that you are putting the right firmware on the right place. And that says the update is complete. Please wait for the LED to resume blinking before disconnecting power. So we'll just give it a few more moments and that is as easy as it is on Express LRS, the thing has rebooted and we're now back in business. Now we can actually configure it. So that's the entire process. The only extra thing that I would do that I haven't shown is I would just power cycle the whole thing, go in, have a look at the setup tab, make sure that everything is working. But hopefully that puts the mind at rest for those of you that might have been looking at Express LRS and some of the older videos where it was a little bit complicated and you kind of had to understand a lot of technology in order for it to work. It really it isn't like that now. You literally have to pick the technology that you use, the manufacturer and the receiver type that you have, and it's too easy. So hopefully that helps for those of you that are interested in this. I'm a big fan of Express LRS, and as more and more features continue to be added, it has become kind of my recommendation for pilots who are looking to invest in a radio system now over pretty much everything else on the market. 
Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.